everyone, this is Matt McCool with Motion VFX, and in this video, I want to walk you through the process for creating this freeze frame effect. We do already have a Final Cut Pro version of this, but it uses our M Freeze Frame plugin. And we don't have the same plugin available for DaVinci Resolve, so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can still achieve the same effect. We're going to do most of this on the Fusion page, but I also wanted to kind of show you how this integrates with the color page, with Fairlight, you know, the whole package. So let's go ahead and jump into DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so this is the clip that we're going to be working on, and this is just downloaded from filmpack.com. So it's already in a Rec. 709 uh, deliverable color space, but most likely you're probably doing this with footage that either you shot yourself or maybe that you graded inside Resolve. So just to illustrate a point, I actually want to start in the color page. So I'm just going to put a uh, Cineon log conversion on this clip. And in the following node, I'm going to go to our LUT folder and I'm gonna use one of these built-in film looks that comes with DaVinci Resolve, this Kodak 2383 LUT, and let's close that. And then maybe we'll go find a frame where there's no lens flare. So this is probably gonna be the frame that we're gonna work on. So I think maybe we can make it a little bit warmer, maybe push the shadows down a bit, reduce the color contrast, and maybe get something like that. Okay, so this isn't really a color grading tutorial. I'm just showing you how you can use your colored images inside Fusion because by default, if you color grade an image and then go into the Fusion tab, you'll see that it's still looking at the clip before the color page. So if you go to the edit page and right click your clip and select new compound clip, I'll just title this hero shot. Now, whenever you bring this into Fusion, you can actually see it's the colored version of the clip. So I just wanted to point that out because most likely you're going to want to look at your final grade as you're creating this comp. So let's go back into the edit page and really plan out how we want this to feel. So I think I'm going to freeze the frame right where that lens flare starts to disappear. So right about there, I'm just going to right click and go to change clip speed and select freeze frame, hit change, and that will automatically create a cut. So I'm just going to drag this to around four seconds. And then I'm gonna to go to the very end and go back one frame and create a cut. And then I'm gonna right click on this little sliver here and then go back to change clip speed and then uncheck freeze frame. And then if we zoom in here, we can grab the ending and just drag it back out to the original duration. Okay, so now this is what we have. We have the shot starting like this and then it freezes for about four seconds and then the rest of the shot continues on. So this portion of the clip is really where we're gonna do all of the fusion work. So with my playhead on top of this portion, I'm just going to click on Fusion. And so the first thing I want to do here is mask out our subject away from the background. And there's a couple different ways to do this. If you have the studio version of Resolve, you can use the magic mask. So I'm going to select Media In and hit Shift Spacebar and type in Magic Mask and just draw around our subject like this. And you can see it does a pretty good job of selecting just the subject. And the thing about the magic mask is you normally have to track this. So if you see if I go one frame ahead, the background comes back. So it's got this track forward and backwards button. But because this is a frozen frame, I actually don't really need to do that. So what I could do instead is kind of cheat and bring in a time stretcher node. And that will essentially just lock it to that first frame for the entire comp. So again, the magic mask is only available in the studio version. So I want to show you how you can do this in the free version. So I'm gonna delete those. And with the media in selected, I'm just gonna click on polygon. And that will add a polygon to the mask input of our clip here. And everything goes away because we haven't drawn a shape yet. So what I usually do is come over here to invert. That way I can actually see the clip. And I'm just gonna come down here and start to draw a shape around our subject. And now this does obviously take a bit longer. I'll probably just speed through this but you probably will get a better result doing it this way anyway. And so you can see how I'm just clicking and holding these handles and dragging around the edges here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the polygon and you can see how it's actually cutting the subject away from the background because we have our invert option selected there. But um, I'm actually gonna leave it inverted because I don't actually wanna apply the polygon directly to the mask. I just did that to quickly show you how you could mask out your subject. But now everywhere that we send our output of this media clip will no longer have the pixels that we're cutting away. And we actually want to access those for later on in this tutorial. So what I'm going to actually do is grab my polygon and hold shift and that will disconnect it. I'm just going to leave it over here for a while. And then I'm going to grab a matte control node 
and just attach this right after the media in node. And then using the right click, I'm going to grab an output from my polygon and drop it into the mat control. And then I'm going to select garbage mat. And what this does is it still masks away our subject, but now we still have access if we need to, to use the background. So let me make a little bit more room here. And I'm going to take the output of my mat control and connect it to the output of my media in, and that will create this merge. And I'll just connect that out here. So we're going to basically apply most of the effect along this line right here. This is our background. And with the foreground right here, this is our subject. I'm just going to put a transform right here. And you can see how we can move our subject here away from his background. Now, obviously, we're getting two of him because we still have the original clip, including the subject in the background there. So what I can do is bring in a clean plate and connect it right after the media in on the way over to this merge. And then I'm going to grab another output from my mat control and feed this into the garbage mat of the clean plate node. And you can see that kind of cuts away the part of the image that we're masking. So in the inspector of my clean plate, I'm just going to increase the grow edges slider a bit. Let me move him further out of the way. And this pretty much just repeats the pixels along the edge, giving it kind of the impression that we're revealing parts of the image that were behind him in real life. And so I'm just going to click on fill the rest of the way. And uh, we can see the edge doesn't look perfect. So a couple things I can do here. I'm going to click on my polygon and increase the soft edge just a little bit and maybe even reduce the border width kind of like that. And it still doesn't look great, but it looks better than it did before. So what we can do after the clean plate is bring in a blur node. And you can see if we increase that, it really does hide what's going on. If you have the studio version, I would actually use the lens blur effect. This one's a little bit more realistic. And because it looks like this clip was filmed with an anamorphic lens, we can even squeeze the slider here to kind of create this realistic blur. And now it looks a little bit more integrated like it was actually captured in camera. And I'm noticing right here, there's kind of a problem with my mask. And I actually wanted to use this as an opportunity to show you if you actually adjust the polygon on a different frame than you originally made the polygon, by default, the polygon will animate in between those two keyframes because it's really designed for frame by frame rotoscoping. So to avoid something like this from happening in my inspector, I'm just going to right click where it says right click here for shape animation. I'm just going to remove the polyline. That way, if I make an adjustment, I don't have to worry about being on the same frame that I originally was when I created this polygon and it won't mess up with the animation. So I'm just going to kind of trim these back here to get rid of that highlight. OK, so now I'm going to figure out the timing of our overall effect. So I'm going to go to my transform and I'm just going to reset that and bringing him back to where he started. And I'm also going to click on the lens blur and just bring this all the way to zero. So this should look exactly how the frame before it on the edit page will look. So let's go all the way to the very beginning of our timeline. And I'm going to set a keyframe for the blur size. And also in the transform, I'm going to set keyframes for the size and the angle. OK, and then let's go to frame 15 or so. And we're going to size him up like this, angle him a bit. Let's zoom out so we can see our edges. And I can even move my pivot to kind of have him, you know, rotate off to the side. OK, and then in my lens blur, I'm going to crank this up to about four and a half, something like this. And I'm also going to add another transform after the lens blur effect. And this is going to control the background rotation. So again, I'm going to go to the very first frame and set a keyframe for size and angle and then go back to frame 15. And maybe we'll scale this up, not as much as our subject, but just a little bit. And then let's also angle this maybe the opposite direction. And we're getting kind of this transparency up here. So under the edges, I can set this to mirror. And that will just flip the edges. Obviously, I don't want to spin this too far because it's going to be obvious what is happening there. So something real subtle like that. So now over these 15 frames, we have our subject and background kind of rotating in the opposite direction as the background becomes blurrier. And now right in the beginning, we can kind of see 
the edge a little bit. And so later on in the tutorial, when we actually go into the spline editor and adjust the animation, we can actually increase the uh, lens blur here so that it has a sharper animation, but we'll worry about that later. For now, I'm just gonna stick to the overall effect and then we'll clean up the uh, movement of everything. So I'm just gonna make even more room. I think what would work really nicely is a couple of our effects on the background. So you can actually access all the effects from the edit page over here in your effects panel under templates, edit, effects, motion VFX. And I'm gonna choose something from our restyle pack. I think dreamy number six will work. So I'm just gonna apply that right after the lens blur. And this just sort of gives it a nice glow rays kind of effect. And we can even adjust the position. Maybe we'll try to align this with where it looks like the real sun was. And we can also adjust our colors a little bit. So maybe we'll go for like a, a greenish yellow color like this. And under the color controls, I'm also gonna crank up the saturation a bit. Maybe a little bit more blue, less saturation, maybe a little bit darker as well. And maybe we'll also increase the, the tint here to make it kind of like a some kind of a green color like this. Okay, and we're still on frame 15, and I'm gonna apply a keyframe for the effect opacity. This controls the entire effect right there. So I'm gonna set a keyframe on frame 15. We're gonna go back to zero and just reduce this to zero. Let's also go into the music video pack right here. And I think the video flare will probably look nice. So let's grab one of these and apply it right after the dreamy effect. And under the flare controls, we have a couple different flares to choose from. I think this one looks good. And maybe we'll position this, scale it up. And we can also keyframe the uh, flare opacity. So right now we're on the first frame. So I'll drop that all the way to zero, make a keyframe, go to frame 15 and bring it up like this. And we can even adjust the hue a bit, maybe a uh, blue. I'm gonna come back into my dreamy effect here and just reduce these colors a bit. Okay, and let's go ahead and add a title over here. So I'm gonna come out of the effects tab and go into the titles. I'm gonna choose something from our M title hype pack. And I think I'm gonna use this M title hype number 14. I'm just gonna put this over here in empty space and let's go ahead and just drag it into the viewer so we can look at this alone. And I think we're done with the effects tab, so we'll close that. All right, so in the title, actually we're gonna come into the number and instead of a number, I'm just gonna make up a name here. So maybe we will uncheck the outline. So we have the solid typeface and then I'm gonna go ahead and make it black. Um, for the subtitle, that must be the small part right here. I actually just want to take this out like that. And for this smaller title, I'm going to just write produced by, and we will also make this one black and we can move this up. Maybe we'll make this one bold as well. Make the produced a little bit bigger, slide it over and let's see. All right. Let's go ahead and view our media out again. And so I'm gonna apply our title on top of our background effects. So I'm gonna take all of this, move it over and grab the output of our title and merge it on top of the transform. And now you can see we've got this so far. It looks like we need to reposition our text here. So I'm gonna click on the title and go up to content controls, move this over and let's see, maybe scale it down. And actually let's go into our transform that controls our character here and just push him a little bit more to the side, something like that. Okay, and then back over in our title, just gonna figure out where I want this. And if you hit control or command G, you can get the guides here and kind of see, you know, if you want this to be more centered. And I think for produced, let's actually move this maybe right there. All right, so here's what we got so far. I'm gonna turn off the guide now. I think we also need to add a little bit of contrast to our subject. So after this transform, I'm just going to add a color corrector. And if you increase the contrast, you'll notice that it actually seems to increase the contrast on the entire scene, even though we're only feeding it our subject. 
This is because the color corrector is also adding contrast to the alpha. And so what we need to do is hop over into the options panel and just check pre-divide post multiply. And now we can adjust our contrast and it will only affect the subject there. So I'm just going to crank pretty much everything up over here. Let's take down the saturation a bit, make them really contrasty and bold. And uh, I might add a little bit of color, maybe like a like this orangish yellow color so that he's a little bit more, you know, monochromatic. All right, so here's a quick before and after. And so instead of keyframing all of these parameters, I can just keyframe over here in the settings tab, I can just keyframe blend. So again, I'm gonna go to frame 15, create a keyframe right there and go to the beginning, drop this to zero. Okay, and I think something else that can make this look a little nicer is some camera shake. So let's go ahead and hit shift space bar and add a camera shake. If you hold shift, you can drop this on a connection like this. And let's actually view the camera shake by itself. Obviously this is way too strong. So I'm gonna take these, actually let's start at zero on all of these parameters and just slowly increase these a little bit, maybe some rotation. I'm gonna take the overall strength down a bit and also the speed, just a really subtle movement. And instead of the sine frequency method, I'm gonna change this to square and that will kind of give it a more edgy, almost like a stop motion type of thing. Maybe a little bit more rotation and a little slower and take down the strength. A lot of this is gonna just be tweaking. We might even come back to this node later and adjust the uh, movement. So let's see what this looks like on top of everything else. Not bad. All right. And let's also add some camera shake to our title here. So I'm just gonna copy that camera shake node and paste it after our title. And I don't want this to have the exact same movement as our subject. So a quick way to kind of change this up a little bit is to adjust our randomness slider. So maybe I'll take this down a bit and tweak some of our settings here. Maybe make this one slower, even weaker. That way it just kind of breaks up the movement and looks a little bit more organic. Yeah. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add kind of like a diagonal letterbox effect. So we can do that using a background node I'll just take this and merge it after everything right before media out. And then I will add a rectangle mask to the background like this. And then if I invert that, let's stretch out the width beyond the border a little and increase this and maybe even, you know, give it kind of this angle. And uh, let's go to our favorite frame, number 15 there. And we can keyframe the angle and the height. And let's go to the very beginning and bring the angle to zero and the height beyond our frame like this so that it kind of squeezes down like that. All right, so yeah, that looks good. I think all we have to do now is undo all the animations so that by the end of the comp, everything returns back to the default values. So let's choose maybe like frame 76. Let's open up the spline editor. If you click on the three dots here, I usually like to have show only selected tools because you don't really need to see tools that you don't have keyframes on. So I'm going to go through and select everything that we've added keyframes to. I don't need to select the title because that's got its own keyframes, but everything else that we have manually added keyframes to, I'm just going to select all of those. And we can see here, we've got everything displaying in our spline editor. And then if I click on the three dots again, I can select all tools and then zoom to fit. Let's zoom out a little bit here. So I'm gonna just drag a box to select all of those and hit F to flatten the curve. And then I'm gonna hit T and let's bring the ease in. Something pretty aggressive like this. And I think even for the ease out, we can make this a little bit sharper. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now all we have to do is inverse all of our keyframes so that they end in the original positions. So I'm just going to zoom out here and select all of these keyframes and holding control or command on a Mac, I'm just gonna click and drag and that will create a duplicate of all these keyframes here. And let's bring this about here. And then if I hit V on the keyboard, that will reverse all these keyframes. 
So now we've got the end of our comp returning back to all of the original positions. And I think instead of having our title animate out, what I'm going to do is click on our title and uncheck the out animation like this. And instead what I'll do is go, let's see, where does everything end at frame 80? I'm going to go to my merge too. This is what's merging my title over everything else. And I'm just going to add a keyframe for blend, go to the very end and just create a pretty basic fade out. And let's also flatten the uh, spline here like this. And maybe we'll even zoom the uh, text out a little bit. So actually I'm looking at this and it looks kind of a little bit too big. So I'm going to scale it down just like that. Okay, and let's add a transform after our camera shake. And uh, what I'll do here is just add a keyframe for size, go to the end of the comp and just zoom it up a little bit like that. And again, we'll ease. Okay. And the only other thing I want to fix is our lens blur because, you know, right in the beginning where this is transitioning, we can see this harsh edge. So an easy way to fix that is to adjust our spline. So I'm going to click on lens blur and look in my spline editor. And so let's actually bring our ending keyframe and let's just kind of bring this a little closer so that it lands at that maximum blur value a little bit sooner than everything else. It doesn't need to have the exact same animation curve as everything else in the scene. We're just trying to hide the fact that we are artificially bringing back some of the, the background behind our subject there. And same thing with the end animation. I'm just going to kind of make this a little bit slower to return to its default value. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. Let's go to the edit page and I'm going to come up to playback and turn my render cache to smart. That will just automatically uh, render this fusion clip here so that it plays back in real time. And I think we can add some sound effects here to motivate the effect here. So let's go to my media pool and I've got a couple of these sound effects from lens distortions. So I'm going to pick this little portion here and just drop this right where the transition kind of starts. Yeah. And then uh, let's try this one here. Yeah, this one could be for the end. And uh, maybe we can also put this longer one kind of over the entire thing here. Okay, and then I also have a song here from soundstripe.com. And I think this will fit nicely. So let's go ahead and put this down here. Let's make some more room. And uh, this one kind of crescendos up so let's line this up with kind of the start of the uh, song here. And I'll just fade this in. Uh, and then one last thing, I'm going to hop into Fairlight and uh, in our audio track number three, I'm just going to pull up the EQ here and enable the band number six. And what we can do is basically animate this muffle to kind of crescendo with the song. So what we'll do is toggle the automation right here. And then in this little drop down menu, I can select EQ band six frequency. Let's expand this. And this line here represents our frequency here. So what we'll do is hold the alt or the option key and add a keyframe there. And then another one kind of leading up to this one over here. All right, I think that's it. Let's watch this one more time. So just to recap, we first created a compound clip so that we could work with the graded clip inside of Fusion. Then we timed out the freeze frame using the change clip speed menu. And then we brought the clip into Fusion and masked the subject away from the background. And then using a clean plate node, we faked the background fill so that when the character animates away from his original position, we see what looks like the real world background behind him. 
And then we animated our character in the background and added some effects from our M Restyle, M Music Video, and a title from our M Title Hype Pack. And then we added some color correction, some camera shake, and a diagonal letterbox to give this effect an edgy feel. And then we use the spline editor to reverse all the animations. Finally, we added some sound effects and music to really finish this effect off. If you have any other ideas for future tutorials, definitely write them in the comments below. And also be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.